The mind sees everything in terms of division. So when we're in mind, we're in a society of division. When we are in the now consciousness, that sees everything as one because that's what consciousness is. The infinite I. So who do we think we are? We think we're humans. We are consciousness. And to perceive reality and live our lives from those two perspectives brings a dramatic difference in the way we see ourselves and life. The quantum world, quantum mechanics, is really the play and display of information, the play and display of potentiality, waves of information, waves of potential electron. And it's important, the word potential. This isn't the world of electrons, it's the world of potential electrons. But when you have, you have to ask the question, waves of what, really? What is the field that is waving? Is it the ocean? No, it's a universal ocean, an ocean of pure potentiality, an ocean of abstract potential existence. We call it the unified field or superstring field. And that's what we're made of. So, as you said, the tighter physics have tried to grasp onto physical reality to understand what it's really made of, what are the core building blocks of life, at the basis of it all. Life, the universe, slips through your fingers and you come up with something that's increasingly abstract, increasingly abstract to the come to the realm of pure abstraction. And that's what the unified field is. It's pure abstract potential, pure abstract being, pure abstract self-aware consciousness, which rises in waves of vibration to give rise to the particles, the people, everything we see in the vast universe. Consciousness, and we are all God trying to realize our full potential. And when I'm talking about love, I'm not talking about I love you, saw you down the disco, darling, not that. I'm talking about a level of love that you really have to experience because there's no words to describe it. And when I was in that ayahuasca state, the opening line of this female voice was, the only thing you really need to know is infinite love is the only truth. Everything else is illusion. In other words, in other words, the existence of one infinite consciousness, that's the only truth. Everything else is, the, is illusion. It's the manifestation and, and manifestations of that uh, consciousness in many and various ways. But the manifestations are the illusion. The consciousness is the base reality of everything. And one of the lines from one of my books, love is not something you're in, it is something you are. That's the difference. 
Pope John Paul II said the worst prison would be a closed heart. I must say the irony of someone from the Roman Catholic Church saying that is not lost, but <laughs> I do take the point. And uh, the heart is the key. The key to opening that auric field so consciousness and mind start to work together and my God, what a different world we'd live in if we went from that uh, state that we're in now. And so what we're looking at among billions of people are people entrapped in mind. And because of the way the mind perceives reality as everything is apart and not connected, and it sees things in, in, in complexity instead of the connection of everything, we are in a situation where we are a manipulator's party trick when we're in that state. Enlightenment, I thought, is it possible for human beings to gain enlightenment? And what is that? Okay. And, and, and is it possible to really get happiness going from within? Because we are always looking out, out, out for happiness. And we live in a world of change. Everything is always changing. And if you see this car that you love and you want this car, it's going to make you happy. You save up or if you have the money, you get that car. And I even you know you brush your teeth looking at your car. It's so beautiful. It's so much happiness. And you drive it and keep it clean and you're going along. Then the time passes. And a year later, it's kind of dirty with some scratches and dents. Two years later, you're driving down the road and you spot a car that you want. And this car starts crying because you don't want it anymore. True happiness grows from within. When you dive within and really dive all the way and experience that ocean of consciousness, which Dr. John Hagelin's science calls the unified field, oneness, unity, oneness and unity, it's so beautiful and as he says at that fundamental level we are all one we're one world family we have to view life as an opportunity what are you doing with it are you afraid of it i mean some people live their lives apparently what they are doing is arranging their deathbed scene they want it to take place in a large baronial house with clipped green lawns, acres in surround. They want uh, the room in which they die to be filled with fine art. They want their loving heirs to be dutifully assembled while they pass out the final wisdom. And they spend their entire life creating the dramatic scenario of their passage. And of course you have to work hard because you've got to make the money to buy that house. You have to uh, sire all these children, educate them into your values so they won't be stabbing you in the back and misbehaving in this situation. Uh, you have to create loyalty, possession, power, all of these things. And then you won't die in a ditch, unknown and abandoned, you know. But on the other hand, what was the quality of that life, you know? Uh, History is turning into a white knuckle ride for sure <laughs> and without the faith in some kind of transcendental phase transition uh, I think there's a tendency to despair and to panic and to nihilism and religion has failed. They can only conceive of phase transition as apocalypse as Ragnarok, the twilight of the gods. That isn't what it is. We are closing distance with the first moments of true human civilization. You know, when people actually do treat each other with respect, when there actually is a place made for the celebration of human differences, when we actually do feel the suffering of the people around us and respond to that.
We are the power in everyone. We are the dance of the moon and the sun. We are the hope that will never hide. We are the turning of the tide. If we can turn the tide within ourselves from freedom or to freedom, from fear, then we turn that tide outwardly in the planet. And all it is, like everything else, is a choice. A choice between fear and love. That's all it is. We can choose to be frightened. We can choose to hate. It's a choice. Or we can choose not to fear. And we can choose to love. But I love you because you exist. I love you whatever. I love you without condition. And if we want to change the world, it has to start with self. Fear, anger, hatred, condemnation, dictating what other people should be. That's the world we've got. That's the prison. But paradise is waiting. It's a thought, an attitude away. That's all it is, a choice away. Love. We love each other and love the world. Our lives are fundamentally changed and the world is fundamentally changed. And we are the generations, strange as it may seem when you survey the world today, we are the generations I passionately believe who are going to love the world into the paradise it really should be and was always designed to be. Changing the world is not something in the future anymore. Oh, I hope it will be better for the kids. It's here and now. We're going to see it happen. Another song, the chorus of which I'll finish with. Love can build a bridge between your heart and mine. Love can build a bridge. Don't you think it's time? More and more people across this planet are screaming yes to that question. And we are the generations who are going to love the world to a paradise. Thank you very much.